How's it going, people? We finally reached the grand finale of our Sherwin-Williams Color Mix Color Forecast for 2021. We've already gone through the first three color palettes from this curated collection, and it's time to round things off with the palette known as Encounter. It's James from thepaintpeople.com with another colorful video about the amazing world of painting and decorating. To all our loyal subscribers watching, thank you so much for your constant support. And to anyone new who's watching, I hope to convince you to hit that beautiful red subscribe button by the end of this video. And the bell. Encounter is one of four mini color palettes that were announced by Sherwin-Williams as colors to look forward to seeing in interior design for 2021. Each of the four have a corresponding theme, and Encounter has influences of natural materials and an overall modern bohemian aesthetic. Like the other color palettes, you'll see some lighter neutrals, some deep and dark accent colors, and some fun character-defining mid-tones that encapsulate the overall message. Encounter is really about the different encounters we experience throughout our lives. Yes, there is that overarching theme of being grounded and earthy, but as we all know, Earth is a beautifully vibrant, varied, and ultimately diverse place that is not just made up of greens, blues, and browns. Although, spoiler alert, you may see some of those in this palette. Getting into the first color, I know whenever I get to travel, I like to experience the local coffee of places, which is represented in this first color, Java. Java is a deep chocolatey brown that I wouldn't necessarily classify as an espresso brown, which is more of an off-black color. The LRV here is seven, so it is considerably dark and would most likely be used off of the walls in the form of accents, but you can absolutely use it as a statement color in your more showy rooms in your home. And I really like this color's interaction with your cooler grays and blues for that complementary back and forth they have with one another. We go from really dark to pretty light in a Sherwin-Williams favorite, Alabaster. So this is the lightest color in this group by a decent sized margin. And Alabaster has an LRV of 82, firming its place as the white color of the Encounter palette. It can be a great trim color for any of the other colors here. It just needs to be said that it is a light grayish, where it contains gray and beige coming together, which can make certain baseboards and doors look a tad dingy, for lack of a better word. But that's only if you're used to seeing those super bright whites like a high reflective white, for example, which isn't always the best option either. All in all, Alabaster is a fantastic versatile light color that is able to play alongside blues and yellows just the same. This takes us into a darker neutral color called Natural Tan, which has an LRV of 65. To me, it's not so much of a dark tan color as it is a beige with brown undertones, tinted by a bit of gold and a touch of red as well. It's a pretty balanced approach to a mid-tone beige as it doesn't have that green cast that more gray dominant beiges can sometimes have and not quite enough red where your walls will seem straight up pink. There can sometimes be the slightest peachy tone that shows up, but it's pleasant to my eyes. And especially if you're working with other colors in this palette, it's a great fit. Now for something completely different, let's look at Rosemary, which is a beautiful, dark, herbaceous green that has an LRV of 14, yet it has that ideal, ever so slightly dusty quality that you get when you add a bit of white into a color to soften its edges a tad. This is going to be the only green color reflected here, yet it still manages to feel like it's walking that line between green in kind of a slight gray. It's as if it were a green stone of some sort, rather than green grass, for example. I will say it's a color that I would not want to overuse. In my mind, its perfect use case would be on a dresser, kitchen cabinets, or even just the kitchen island itself. And maybe as an accent wall, but only if it has some visual texture or distinction to it, in the form of wainscoting, for example. The darkest color on this list isn't even a black, but more of a navy blue, and it's aptly named Naval. This was conveniently last year's color of the year, and it's a navy blue that sort of has that dark denim type of look. And if your dark blue jeans tend to have brass or gold buttons and rivets to them, then you'll know how well this type of color works with those warmer gold or mustard colors. 
In fact, thinking back to last year, I remember a lot of the promotional material coupling this color had it paired with golds, and the combination was really striking to say the least. Naval is clearly a navy blue, and it doesn't have a tendency to go into teal territory like some other blues. It can sometimes drift slightly into that dark indigo area, but because it's so dark and deep, it does a pretty good job at staying fairly consistent with its look, no matter what sort of lighting you have. Now let's head over to a color that will feel a little more versatile, because its LRV is 45, making it a mid-tone color, and its undertones are cool, but still feel a bit neutral. Jubilee is a silvery blue gray that is one of the more stereotypically modern colors on this list, mainly because it's a blue leaning gray. I call this one versatile even though it's not super light. It's because it still has this buoyant feeling to it and it can be used in larger areas like hallways. In fact, I find this color to work better when you give it more space to work. And if it's in a smaller room, then I would encourage good lighting. Otherwise it could make the room feel a little bit smaller. It's a welcome addition to this palette because it suits the needs of the people that don't necessarily want to incorporate as much beige in their home. But personally, it would have been nice to see something that was maybe just a little bit lighter so you could feel even more confident using it in your dimly lit spaces too. But that's just personal preference. I'm sure Sherwin-Williams knows better than me. But now for the most out there color out of this entire bunch, we have Tarnished Trumpet a rich honey mustard mid-tone color. Don't let the 47 LRV fool you. Tarnished Trumpet is anything but a flexible, versatile color. It's beautiful, but very bold, and more likely will be used as a statement color, whether you use it on the walls or otherwise. It sort of reminds me of the golds I used to see paired with Naval last year, which leads me to believe that this might have been added in as a complementary pairing to those more cooler colors. And come to think of it, that's how I would probably incorporate this gold color with the others. Our next color, Reddened Earth, which is really a perfect name for this color. What you have here is a taupey terracotta that is hearkening back to the reds from 10 to 15 years ago that were mega popular. What makes this one a little bit different is the amped up gray brown quality within it, which allows it to slot itself into the other earthy colors in the Encounter palette. Its LRV is 19, so it's dark, but it's dusty, which means you'll get more use out of it than you might think. Moving on to our last two colors, one's a bit cooler and the other, not so much. Both have a similar LRV, which means they both reflect the same amount of light, roughly speaking, and they're both in the low 20s. Starting with Blustery Sky, this is an interesting dark powdery blue that contains a good amount of gray and just a hint of green to introduce some of that aquatic teal feel to it. It's a fairly versatile darker color and finds ways to incorporate with grays, of course, containing gray itself, but I love it used alongside warmer colors. Not just beige, but also browns and reds too. Speaking of browns, we come to our last color in the Encounter palette, which also means it's the last 2021 color mix color as well. And it is a darker green leaning taupe, anchored by a bit of black and brown. And the color is called Hardware. With a straightforward name like that, you would think that it would be used inside more often, but hardware as a color gets lumped into the exterior color category. It's truly a phenomenal color to be used outside, on siding especially, because it really seems to complement everything found in nature. You have that earthy brown quality, the hint of green, and for practical reasons, it looks great when enhanced by bright daylight too. Sherwin-Williams did something really cool here, because they recognized that not everyone will have identical taste in color. So each of these four mini palettes will really give you a lot to work with when you're picking out your own personal color palette. Use these as inspiration to express your own creativity. If you've missed the previous episodes of this series or simply want to revisit them, I'll put them all up for you so you can have a look. If you like these videos, it'd be so awesome if you can show us by hitting that like button for us. Subscribe to continue cultivating the color content you crave. What can I say? I love my alliteration. See you on the next one.